Do you constantly doubt yourself or override yourself thinking you're overreacting or needy or just too much and now you just don't trust yourself? If you've ever been gaslit by someone you love and believe them, you probably now gaslight yourself, which is what causes this internal confusion. Today, I'll unpack this and give you some concrete boundaries you can start using today so you stop gaslighting yourself and get really clear on what your truth is so you can trust your intuition and no longer accept toxic behavior in romantic relationships. Like Paulina, who struggled hugely with negative self-talk and second-guessing herself from a lifetime of being in toxic relationships, relationships that actually started with childhood domestic violence. These boundaries ignited a fire within her and caused an incredible shift in the way that she thinks so that she now shows up with confidence and clarity in her romantic relationships. And if you want to stop gaslighting yourself so you can get clarity in your romantic relationships, this is the work that I do with my clients. I'd love to help guide you on that journey. There's a link to book a call in the description below and I'd love to chat with you. So if you've only ever had toxic or unhealthy relationships your whole life, chances are you've been gaslit a lot of that time and you may or may not be aware of the level and extent of gaslighting. This is where you're told that your feelings and instincts are wrong because that person is outright lying or manipulating you or they don't know their truth and so the information they're giving you is extremely confusing. You might have been told you're too much or you're too needy or that your memory is wrong or that you're too sensitive. And people that say and do this type of gaslighting are often emotionally limited in terms of their own capacity. They also probably have narcissistic tendencies and behaviors, but they don't know how to take responsibility for their own actions and behaviors and internal world. So they project onto you and pass you off a whole lot of these completely toxic things. Now, what I'm interested in and want to unpack today is why you are susceptible to gaslighting, because that is going to give us the key to understanding why you now gaslight yourself. Because some people out there, when someone starts to gaslight, them, they will just turn around and say, you are lying. <laughs> That's completely wrong. And they'll walk away and they won't stay in the relationship, right? They won't stick around, but there is something within you that makes you susceptible to gaslighting and susceptible to believing what they're saying over what your own instincts are. So I want to unpack that. So what makes you prone to gaslighting is in a nutshell, having low self-esteem, no self-trust and no boundaries. And this comes from often how you were treated to and talked to as a child, right? There's no sense of where I end, what is me and mine and where you begin, because you've only ever experienced this kind of enmeshment in relationships, which is where someone has a heavy influence over you and there is a kind of coercion going on to get you to do what they want you to do. And their truth and their reality overrides your sense of truth. So this is kind of a bullying or a manipulative behavior, but this can also come from coercion based on love, right? Like you can be convinced to do something because that's how that person will feel loved by you. So it's this kind of manipulation that can be very confusing for you because you do love someone, but they're not allowing you to have boundaries. Now, when you're a child, this is the key time that you don't learn boundaries when you're being kind of bullied or coerced by parents that don't have the emotional capacity or the attunement skills to raise you in a healthy, secure way. So some examples of gaslighting that you might be familiar with or not familiar with are someone saying, I don't know what you're talking about, or can't you just take a joke? I didn't mean it like that. Or don't get upset over nothing. You sound crazy. Stop being so oversensitive. Or I never said that. You have issues with your memory. Why are you with me if I'm so bad or terrible? And relax, it's not a big deal, or that never happened, or you're so emotional and you're so needy. These are all examples of gaslighting and some of them are extremely common behaviors in relationships. So knowing and understanding that you've been gaslit is really key to separating out, okay, that person might not have meant it, but that's actually the effect of what they're saying. Now, like I alluded to, being susceptible to gaslighting really starts in our earliest relationships right? Being gaslit as a child, but actually thinking that that was completely normal behavior. So your parents, like I said, might not have had any emotional capacity to deal with themselves and they probably were gaslit and coerced and manipulated and bullied by their parents as well. So they're just kind of passing on this 
generational trauma. They might not have the emotional maturity or emotional availability within themselves to handle your emotional experience and it makes them feel uncomfortable. So they'll shut you down because they can't handle it in themselves. And what will result is them telling you that what you're feeling and thinking is wrong. And the unfortunate result of this is that children will make this about themselves. The fault will lie with the child. The child can't believe that the parent is at fault because that actually disturbs their attachment mechanism where they've got to believe that they're safe within the family unit so that their brains and bodies can develop. So we have this way of turning it on ourselves. It's because of us that there's a problem. It's this emotion is bad. I need to believe what my parent is saying in order for them to feel loved and connected with me. And so we kind of gaslight ourselves, we push ourselves down. And this becomes part of our personality because we are seeking the approval and validation and validity of the experience of our primary attachment figure of our parents and of people outside of us. And this means we never grow an internal self-trust loop, right? We're always looking outside to trust the world. And as an adult, you then carry this into your romantic relationships you attach in the same way that you learned to attach in childhood, right? This learnt behavior is that your emotions and feelings and instincts aren't as important as the person that you're in love with, that you're attached to. So if you come into a relationship with someone who has a very strong coercive personality and they also have a tendency to manipulate, they've got toxic behaviors, you will override yourself even when you know what they're doing is wrong. And this is commonly called codependency. So this is the reason why you gaslight yourself. You have this tendency, you are susceptible to it. You've been on the receiving end of it when you were a child and your relationships really are your mirrors, right? We talk to ourselves the way that others talk to us. So if our parents criticized us, if our parents told us that what we're thinking and feeling isn't right, we will actually tell ourselves the same thing, okay? And often our internal self-critic is actually the tone and the exact words of one of our parents that we've internalized their voice and we now speak to ourselves in that exact same way. So if you've only ever been in toxic relationships in your adult life, you have learned to gaslight yourself in the same way that they've been gaslighting you. Because of this experience you had in childhood and because of your tendency to focus on and prioritize what other people are saying and their truth over your own truth. So this kind of dynamic that is external and that starts external with the parent-child relationship and then into the uh, romantic relationships then gets internalized and becomes the relationship we have with ourselves. So some examples of self gaslighting phrases are you telling yourself, I'm probably being selfish for complaining about that, or I'm probably imagining things or what's wrong with me. It's not enough of a problem to make a fuss about. Wow, I'm so needy or others have it worse. So I shouldn't complain. He didn't really mean that I'm overreacting. It's my fault. So I don't deserve help. And I'm probably just being too sensitive. These are all phrases that are critical. They are bullying, internal bullying, they are actually manipulative and they often start with the words should or could and they're very minimizing as well. So this is kind of like this way of crumpling ourselves up into a small ball and making ourselves feel terrible. So how do we actually stop this? Now that we know why we're prone to it, this is going to allow us to reverse the way that we speak to ourselves so that we stop gaslighting ourselves. Now, the opposite of self gaslighting is self guiding or self validating, which is where you guide your self and your awareness to your own internal experience and what that actually is separately from what other people are experiencing, right? There's that separation between what is me and mine and my experience and what yours is. So acknowledging your own experience and validating internally as a valid human experience is what we need to learn to do to stop self gaslighting. And a way to do this is to align yourself with important values that allow you to nurture this way of speaking. So aligning your values to self-trust, to self-esteem and to self-love. We're going to focus on those three values and then setting boundaries to encourage 
those values will allow you to do this. Now, boundaries, if you've looked at any of my videos on this channel, there are two types, there's internal boundaries and external boundaries. External boundaries are the things that you do and say with others to let them know where your edges are, what you can and cannot tolerate. Internal boundaries are the boundaries you have with yourself to protect you from yourself. It's like an internal agreement you make with yourself that keeps you safe from the other parts within you that can let loose and cause havoc, which are the self gaslighting parts. So these values of self trust, self love and self esteem are going to form the cornerstones of the internal boundaries you set with yourself as to how you speak with yourself, how you act with yourself internally, and that will overturn the internal harsh and criticizing and minimizing voice within you. So the internal boundaries of self-trust, let's run through some. Honor your true experience of a situation, right? Acknowledge your true feelings in that moment. Differentiate your opinions and feelings from others. Stand by your unique past experiences and how they influence your present understanding. Honor your limitations and flaws without shame. Act in your best interest. Self-sacrifice only with discernment to people who've earned your trust and respect by treating you well. So screenshot that, print that out, have that as a list of things that you now follow and abide by as internal boundaries to cultivate self-trust that you now no longer will tolerate anything other than that within yourself, which will then translate into external boundaries and you operate from there. Let's look at self-esteem boundaries. So hold yourself in high regard, equal to others. See yourself as worthy in all situations, regardless of others' opinions. Act from a place of worthiness. Your inner circle is only people that hold you in the same high regard and differentiate your opinion of yourself from others' opinion of you. This is a really important theme that's just coming up, right? The separation of what you feel and think and believe and your past experience and what you bring to the table as different from what others are, right? It's kind of like beginning to take up space in your life and only being around people that really recognize and value the space that you hold and that you show up. And if you've been in toxic relationships where there's gaslighting, there is no respect and there is no value for the space that you hold up, right? They're using you effectively. So starting to do this is going to instantly change the game for you in terms of the types of people that you allow and tolerate. Let's go through the self love boundaries to have with yourself. Acknowledge what you need to feel loved, your love language, whatever that might be. Honor your need and meet it yourself primarily and then express to others how they can best love you. Act from a place of worthiness of receiving love just as you are and extend yourself to love only people who are respectful, trustworthy and loving towards you. Now, keep in mind when you set a boundary, an internal boundary with yourself and then an external boundary with someone else, it doesn't mean that they have to follow it, right? Okay. Setting a boundary isn't about changing someone else's behavior. It's about letting them know what is and isn't okay and then observing how they respond. And if they choose not to follow your boundary or meet you at that place, you then need to follow through with consequences. More often than not, I have people say, I set a boundary and he just ignored it. You know, what do I do? Consequences. You've also got to follow through. If you continue to do this, I will have to leave or I will no longer be in relationship with you, right? Boundaries are not about changing other people's behaviors. They're about staking out our space. And if someone else crosses that, it's up to us and it's our responsibility to act accordingly. So let's go back and look at that initial list of self gaslighting and use these values and these internal boundaries to now apply a version that is self validating of them instead of self gaslighting. So instead of I'm probably being selfish for complaining about that, a self validating statement and boundary is it's human to have needs and healthy communication is expressing when someone lets me down as opposed to I'm probably imagining things. It's about my experience. I'm not arguing over facts because your facts, facts and your experience may or may not be in alignment, but that is not actually what's going on. That's not what the issue is. Number three, what's wrong with me instead of that, what needs attention within me? 
right? What's wrong with me is just an instant cut to shame, right? We need to actually just allow ourselves to have a human experience and pay attention to what's going on and act with curiosity instead of instant shame and instant negativity towards ourselves. Number four, it's not enough of a problem to make a fuss about. Let's turn that around. It's enough of a problem that I noticed it, which means it needs to be communicated. Okay, this is really honoring things that you notice and not straight away shutting yourself down, but actually honoring the fact that when you do notice something, if it's appropriate, you need to acknowledge it firstly and then communicate it if it's appropriate rather than just instantly make yourself wrong. Number five, wow, I'm so needy. The self-validating example is them not being able to meet my needs doesn't make me needy. All right, because there is a person who can't meet your needs that will think any of your needs are needy. Then there is a person who can meet your needs and you won't be as needy because you are only as needy as your unmet needs, depending on the level of relationship you have with yourself and how you meet your own needs as well as a caveat. Number six, others have it so worse that I shouldn't complain. Even though others have it worse, that doesn't detract from how bad it is for me. So we kind of use comparisonitis to detract our own experience and think that we're being selfish in thinking it's bad, but we actually just self gaslight ourselves in doing that. We need to acknowledge if we're having a hard time, if something's going on within us rather than minimizing it. Number seven, he didn't really mean that. So a self-validating example is it's irrelevant whether he meant it or not when it makes me feel uncomfortable. Okay. So we kind of want to make excuses for people when they do or say things because we can see that they don't mean it, but we're actually minimizing our own experience in that way. Their intention is separate from how it makes us feel. We can work to understand their intention, whether it was positive or negative. And as well, we are having a human experience which needs to be communicated and acknowledged in communication as well. Number eight. I'm overreacting. A self-validating version of this is I still have a point or need that needs attention. Okay. So again, it's just allowing ourselves to really acknowledge the fact that we're not going to minimize our experience. We're going to acknowledge it and we're going to act on it if we need to. Number nine, it's my fault. So I don't deserve help. This is such a shame based statement. It's human to make mistakes and I still deserve support, right? We are literally everyone here is human. Everyone on this planet makes mistakes. There is no reason why just you as a special snowflake don't deserve support because everyone is out here making mistakes. Okay. And you deserve it as well. Number 10, I'm probably just being too sensitive. All right. This is a really big one, particularly for women. We're socialized to be always told that we're sensitive because it's very inconvenient for a you know, men to have to deal with these sensitivities because they aren't in touch with their emotions and they haven't been allowed to be in touch with their emotions thanks to toxic masculinity. So a self-validating um, example of this is if I'm sensitive, I'll ask them kindly to keep this in mind. This is an important part of who you are that makes up who you are at a situation, at a conversation, at a table, or if they're talking about something, just let them know this is a sensitive topic for me. You know, I just would like you to keep that in mind. That is a perfectly fine example of an external boundary to set as well as that internal boundary, um, allowing yourself to be sensitive and to acknowledge that. A lot of these examples are just going to feel like they're going to feel ridiculous. You probably won't believe them. And this is because you have this internal climate of self gaslighting, but this is the, this is the work that we need to get to. So don't expect yourself to be totally on board with every single aspect of uh, these boundaries and these phrases straight away. I want you to act as if, as if you're trying on a new outfit for the first time, right? With practice, it's going to seem like the new normal, but you need to practice and get used to talking to yourself this way and allowing yourself to have this experience and raising your standards for how you treat yourself is literally learning a new language. So how long does it take for someone to learn a foreign language? This is what we're doing now. And because you've previously learnt how to gaslight yourself and how to speak critically towards yourself, you can unlearn that 
and you can learn a new one in its own place. All right. Now, if you'd like direct help doing this, this is the work that I do with my clients inside my program, Heal Your Heart School. So I'd love to chat with you about how I can help directly guide you through this process of learning how to stop self gaslighting and really forming a secure, healthy relationship with your, with yourself. You can book a call to speak with me in my calendar below. And here are some next step videos for you to watch to continue cultivating a healthy, secure relationship with yourself so you can enjoy and have beautiful, healthy, intimate relationships. And for now, I'll see you in the next video.